Harvard had, had, had this idea that they would, uh, they would, uh, that they would, I would become um, uh, a, a, a candidate for future employment, and I, you know, and for that I would have to sign on for a number of years in order to get to the a foot into the tenure situation, which would take me a number of years. And I thought, I'm not going to, I can't do this. I, I'm a, I'm a, I was a practicing set designer in England. And so I um, went to, so when Cassaro offered me that project, I moved to Brooklyn. And from Brooklyn, I went to Soho and a loft. There I, um, I became, uh, uh, I made my uh, New York studio. And worked, uh, you know, in 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 New York, and and I did, uh, I worked, uh, I did some projects in England, as well, and I, but mainly I worked, I began working more into opera, and uh, working in regional opera houses. After New York, or during New York, uh, and in New York. I mean, I I did. Uh, Strauss Vogel and I did. Um, we did a. Uh, we did a project. We did. I did a double bill opera, at Le Perp Space at Brooklyn Academy. I did things off off Broadway. I did. I did um, uh, 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 pieces for avant garde uh, choreographers at. at um, um, What's it called? Uh, there's a there was a theatre in 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 the village in West Village. I think it was called. I want to call it uh, the American Dance Center. It's a name like that. But I did. I I did. Um, I remember. Uh, they had no money, but I remember. I I made the set out of white tape. I made it taped. I got white tape and Phil Jones, my sister, and I. We did a perspective grid on the on the stage, in white tape. I mean, it's a lot of lines, of t a lot of tape, and we took the tape up the back wall. It was all done in perspective, and all the dancers wore black leotard, so I taped them with white tape. So it was this white tape, black and white tape production. I I just made it up. I I, I don't know, but it it. it just, I thought, what else do I do with white tape, you know? Uh, and I did things like, um, uh, there was one choreographer wanted, she didn't want to dance, she wanted her people to pose on sculptural, sculpture plinths. And each dancer had a tape recorder. And each tape recorder, they recorded their lives as a young modern dancer. So what you could do is go to, and, and she's standing like this. They're all women, and they're in the, whatever leotard they choose. And you press the tape recorder, and she's, my name is Barbara. I came to New York when I was 19, etc. And that was another project that I, I did. Can you describe your studio in Soho? Uh, the, stu the studio was uh, on the street level. And it had a big loading dock uh, next to uh, what we call the rag trade, you know, rags. Uh, trucks brought rags, dumped them on the street, on Green Street. People hauled the rag boxes into the, and they had a big gigantic machine that chewed up all the rags. And they made smaller pieces of rags, which they used for furnishing stuffing. So that was going on. Uh, to my right uh, was a, 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 a factory uh, that made scissors. In the middle was this uh, 98 Green Street and it had, some, uh, had a, a, a filmmaker, uh, a graphic designer, a name, his name was Brad Holland, quite famous, he did drawings for the New York Times. Um, there was a composer there who wrote an opera, who I knew quite well. Uh, there was a poet, uh, and 
and I had the uh, street level, and it had a big steel loading dock. And every so often, something would be dumped on my loading dock, and I'd have to go around to get out of the door. Uh, and um, so you went into the lobby, which was, had a, a, a mailbox, different lofts. And, you, and I had two big doors that opened, and you'd go inside. And then I had uh, my, my lady friend at the time, Greta Holby, a choreographer and architect, she was an architect, who'd abandoned architecture to, to be a choreographer. And uh, she also danced in various projects. In, this, in the 70s, there was a lot of dance and movement and experimental theater. There's books written about it now, I gather. Uh, we had a lot of quite famous um, people. Robert Wilson was around the corner with his, his uh, theater group. Uh, um, in my building, there was uh, uh, Richard Wigand, who is a typographer, gra graphic artist. He worked for the New York Times, too. Um, anyway, um, so Greta had uh, designed, uh, I, I, me and a, cu a couple of people, uh, built. I, I could never pick up a hammer and saw again. I burst into tears. My hands were bleeding. Uh, we stripped the place and built a, 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 a rehearsal space. It was very large. It was about a, maybe like 100, 105 feet long. There were no columns. It had gigantic blocks of whatever it's what did they call are they called breeze blocks in so architecture blocks. Yeah. Huge, yeah and it was all painted white and had been plastered um, we made this into a very light space it had a dome a gigantic 25 foot quarter dome it was a quarter dome and it had 3,000 iron, cast iron frames. Uh, I counted one panel and I multiplied it. Um, we had to repair this. Um, and um, we had a, uh, Greta, of course, in her wisdom, said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, she, she has money, she had some money. She said, I'm gonna have installed a real dance floor, a real dance floor that has a spring. And, and and for a, a while, uh, while she was there, uh, we, we parted company. But whilst we were together there, um, there was rented out to choreographers. Uh, Annie de Groot rented it. Um, there were some very well-known people. Uh, Meredith Monk uh, rehearsed there. Some very famous people in the in the avant-garde, and it became a conclave for. For, for the arts. In fact, in the, uh, in the, uh, on Green Street, there's the office for Soho Lofts. And in the lobby, there was a big painted map, nicely painted, by the way, artistically painted. And uh, Green Street Dance Studio was part of the map. And we, were, and we also did perform performances. I brought in lighting equipment and uh, a dimmer board and we had uh, actual had performances there was some there was some there was one one performance i remember and i always have fun uh, had fun with the the artists uh, uh, she she was nake, uh, naked naked feet just her feet and the light was on her feet and she, all you saw was the feet doing movements while she was doing that, her name will come to me soon, she was well known, there was a movie screen. On the movie screen was see waves. Right, right. This was all set up by the our visiting guests, performers. Behind the movie screen, when the screen was not projected from the front, it was lit from behind and there was a violinist. And this violinist played like this. 
<laughs> For about an hour, it seemed to be an hour, while the toes, then as the light left her toes, the, the projector took up her real image, and now you saw her feet, and now she was in Soho on a wall, and you saw her feet doing this, you see, and you know, well, after 10 minutes, you, you, I get it, I, I get it. But you see, not in Soho, in the art form, like Robert Wilson, five hours, six hours with Einstein on the beach. You have to do an hour. And, and after, you know, and I'm, of course, I'm, I'm help, I'm, I own, I mean, I'm, this is my space, so I'm in charge. But I have to be there because you have taking tickets, you know, intermission, you know, use the bathroom, you know. And every night for like for a week, I had to watch. I watched this, you know. And uh, and then of course uh, there was a, the other the other thing it was exactly the same, exactly the same. A trombonist. It was another another particular evening, and the trombonist goes. Burr, burr, burr. Well, this was the sort of talent. This was like this repetitive, um, this repetitive performance art was all the same in a way. It was it just, and I just got so tired of it. You know, that's just a few little examples.